I'm walking around. Yeah, I see you're walking around. Hey there, beer tubers. Welcome back to Maxwell Stars Beer Analysis Ooh. 101. Tonight, we're going to do uh, a famous UK beer from uh, all the way from England. We're going to do Witchwood's Hobgoblin. Got the bottle yeah. versions. I must have the, cat, the can version. I'd introduce how many ABV it is, but it seems to vary. First and foremost, um, we've already been introduced to Greg, who's banging around and wandering around his apartment while we go live, because he knew we were going live. First of all, it's a condo. Second of all, I just knocked my beer over, so it's probably going to explode. <laughs> Open it right now. Anyway, Chris. Okay. Chris. Chris, uh, on the... First of all, the condo. Second of all, I just knocked my beer over, so it's probably going to explode. Well, that's weird. Yeah. All right, we're good. Anyway, Chris, how's it Yo. going tonight? Okay. Yo. Yo. What's going on? No, everything's good. You're good. You, you got your camera working now that you knocked it over? Yeah. Well, I didn't knock the camera over. I just locked the lens or locked the shutter. But we're All good. good. Everything's good. Right on. All right. Let's uh, get down to business here. Witchwood Hobgoblin Ruby Ale. Witchwood, the, the tale of the brewery. We'll go. Witchwood began in 1983 in Whitney, Ox Oxfordshire. When an English brewer, Patty, yeah, great, shut up. Patty Glenny purchased the brewer, the former site of the Clinch's Brewery, uh, which closed in the early 1960s, um, and opened the Eagle Brewery. Output in these early days is about 800 barrels a year. In 1985, he was joined by Chris Moss, and the pair began ramping up production. Chris Moss re later took over the brewery when Patty Glenny left the company. In 1990, the brewery was renamed after the legendary Witchwood Forest that borders Whitney. In 1988, a local landlord hired the brewery to create a special beer for his daughter's wedding. Chris Moss created the original recipe for what be would become Hobgoblin. Uh, some ale was left over after the wedding, and a firkin, uh, or a quarter barrel of the beer, was sold to the local public and became an instant hit. As the legend goes... The beer didn't have a name, so a student behind the bar drew a picture of a goblin on the, on, and stuck it on the side of the barrel. Customers began asking for the Hobgoblin beer, and the name stuck. Untapped calls it a brown ale. Uh, beer advocate and rate beer call it an ESB. Witchwood, on the other hand, just calls it the legendary ruby ale. Legendary ruby beer, right, right, written right here. It doesn't even say ale. It is an ale, though. And um, uh, it is brewed with chocolate and crystal malts. Uh, English Fuggles and Styrian Goldings for hops. Uh, the ABV varies across the world with the original Hobgoblin from 1988 uh, weighing in at 6.5%. Is of course dropped back over the over the course of the years. Uh, and now the bottle version here in North America comes in at 5.2% ABV. And uh, the canned version comes in at 4.5% ABV. And I believe the cask version in, in the UK is 4.5% ABV as well. And there's also a 3.5% ABV version it's made especially for the Swedish market. Anyway, uh, Hobgoblin would go on to be the brewery's most famous beer. They would feature iconic cartoonish fantasy artwork uh, and, and employ uh, slogans such as, What's the matter, lager boy? Are you afraid you might taste something? In 2002, the brewery was bought by Refresh UK, which has since been bought out by Marston's. In 2010, at the G20 summit, this is a cool story, I wanted to include this, UK Prime Minister David Cameron and President Obama exchanged beers as gifts. Uh, Cameron gave Obama 12 bottles of Hobgoblin, and Obama gave Cameron 24 bottles of Goose Island. Obama remarked that uh, the me at the meeting that he would drink his beer chilled, as opposed to the optimal room temperature that you would drink an English strong ale, uh, which resulted in which would releasing T-shirts with the updated slogan saying, What's the matter, Obama? Afraid you might taste something? Anyway, politics aside, which would also mix uh, several other beers, including the Hobgoblin Pale Ale, which Greg's got a can of, uh, the King Goblin Strong Ale, Witchcraft Blonde Ale, Black Witch Porter, Scarecrow, Goliath, and many others. They also brew beers under the brand's Dutchy Originals, a special brand made especially for the Prince of Wales, or the Prince Charles, and uh, also beers from Brax Beer. Uh, Witchwood is also the largest producer of organic beer in the UK. Anyway, while well, I was doing the, my uh, beer spiel, uh, the Clueless Drinker has popped in. Hey, Peter, how are you doing tonight? Peter? He, he seems to have stepped away for a second. I but... see that. Anyway. Sorry about that. 
That's all right. How you doing? How you doing tonight, sir? Uh, not too bad. Yourselves? Yeah, we're we're thirsty. I just want to say Indeed. that uh, this is uh, Peter's first beer one oh beer analysis one. I do believe. Am I correct? It is indeed. And you know what? Time coming. And it, and it just gets me aroused like crazy. It's gonna be some blood you know on the table. You yeah. totally get some hot. Oh, right. that's awesome. Same here. Same here. Close up. I'm sitting down. All right. So moving right along, uh, we might as well start with uh, yeah. We'll start with Peter. What's your history on this beer? Um. Well, I think Hobgoblin was probably the first real ale that I started to drink properly. Oh, wow. So, I don't know. I've got quite a bit of history of this beer, and which would in general, to be honest, um, it's probably one of the the few real ales that I buy on a semi regular basis. Cool. So it started off because I don't know if uh, you get the box that they do in Canada called the Box of Character. We um, get we do we do get that on taste pack. Uh, I think, yeah, I think we got that here. It was like a Marston's pack, isn't it? Um, I think they do a like a Marston's one with some of the breweries, and they do a dedicated Witchwood one. Yeah, there is oh, a okay. character pack. Yeah, we get a Witchwood uh, four pack around Christmas. Yeah, yeah, and that that's pretty much where <clears throat> I started really, and then went from this to like Punk IPA. Um, that was. Another big step in stone. And um, yeah, it's it's a beer that I drink on a semi regular basis because it's, it's really quite affordable. Cool. And just out of curiosity, what's the ABV on the? What are you drinking, can or bottle? Uh, I'm drinking the bottle today. Whoa. And, and uh, uh, 5.2. Oh, so it's the same as mine right here. Ah. All right, moving right along. Let's go with uh, Chris Lysak. Chris, on the 10th, uh, what's your history with this beer? Have you ever had it before, first of all? Um, funny you should ask. <sighs> I did buy the character pack, and I did. I was recording a my own opinion of the Hobgoblin, the 5.2% in the bottle, and it didn't go as well as I wanted, so it's not going to hit the, uh, hit the airwaves unless... Let's have a chance of fixing it, but um, yeah. And uh, once once we get into once we get into um, analyzing this beer a little bit and giving our own opinions and stuff like that and and scores, and I'll and I'll tell you a little a little bit more of my experience with this one. But yeah, that's about it. So this would be my second can or second time drinking the uh, the hot problem. Right on. All right, so moving right along, uh, Greg, are you still there, sir? I'm still here, and my can did not explode. All right, <laughs> uh, score. Speed of score. History, my yeah. history with it is this is probably one of the first beers, craft beers, I had, uh, simply because of the fact it had a cool character on it, and I was looking for, I think it was around Halloween, and I was looking for Halloween beers, and I think I saw this, I'm like, ooh, this looks like a spooky beer, and I had it, and... I don't think I liked it all that much the first time, but that was also back when I was afraid of flavor and it didn't taste like beer. I'm like, oh, this doesn't taste like a Molson Canadian at all. This is awful. Uh, but I like it now. It's a pretty decent beer. It never blows me away, but it's always for the price, a nice beer to drink. And that's about it. I don't know. Maybe drank it 10 times in my life. Cool. Sorry, nothing yeah. exciting. Yeah, I'm probably not going to say a very exciting story either. My personal history on this beer is that um, I, uh, I I couldn't normally get this beer here, but it can. I was sent to me in a beer mail by uh, Dale Brew My Me, or if anybody remembers Dale, if he's watching, hey. Um, anyway, uh, Brew By Me sent me a bottle of it in late 2011, and I think I drank it early 2012, and it was like in the original first season or first year of Maxwell Stars Beer Reviews. It was reviewed number 286, and I, I remember hearing about the beer's name before, but uh, I remember I remember liking it. I can't remember what I gave it for an original score, and, uh, but I remember I actually really liked the beer. Uh, as far as uh, how many times I've had it in real life, I've probably had less than five, uh, but more than three. So that's four. So you've had exactly yeah. four. Yeah. <laughs> exactly four, four times. <laughs> All right. I, I, I'm not sure exactly how many times I've had, but I know it's been three or more times. I'll stop there. All right. Let's move on. So, um, 
I guess the next thing would be to uh, tally your average scores. Let's go back across. Greg, do you have a score for style and a score for out of 10 for style and score out of 10 for, for overall? That's huh. all right. Let's go to Peter first on this one. Yeah, that's all right. Next all right, fine. Step. Let's go to Peter. Exactly, was gonna exactly. Get... Ladies first. That's right, Greg. You're up. <gasps> are you saying I have a vagina? No, I was, I if you just, are, I was referring to my vagina, if you... but if you've got a vagina too, oh, okay. let's make a party. If I suddenly have a vagina, I am leaving right now, and I'm having a whole lot of fun tonight. You're going to have a word you by yourself. Yep. Mm-hmm. We're just classing up. Anyways. Dance. Hey, Peter, you're up. Anyways. Yeah, British ladies first. Yeah, British lady boys. But, um, yeah, I'm not a big fan of ruby ales, which um, I'm attributing this one to because I find – for the most part, especially the British brewed ones, can be really quite dull. You get like that slight sweet caramel flavor, and that's about it. But I think this has a little bit of a... I hate using the word character because they say the beers of character, but it's got a little bit more character and personality to it. It's not mind-blowing or anything like that. But... um. Yeah, I think style-wise, I would probably give this a solid 7 to 8 out of 10. And overall enjoyment, I think it's probably about 8.5 out of 10. Um, I just find it... It's not in your face. It's not anything ridiculously special. But it's just really solidly brewed. Really quite tasty, not too sweet, but not too earthy from like the fuggle hops. I think it's got a nice balance, even though not too many people have a lot of time for this one back in the UK, um, especially since they got took over by Marston's because people claim that the beer considerably changed since the takeover. But I was never really into beer when it happened, so I can never do that. But yeah, I think it's uh, it's an above average tasty sessionable beer and of course being in the uk it's dirt cheap it's pretty much in every conceivable place you buy beer so uh che yeah cheaper than uh, cheaper than cbs for sure right yeah just just the tad huh. all right so uh moving on uh chris might as well go to you considering you're in the middle yeah um okay so going back too, when I was doing my uh, my own opinion with the with this the last time I had this and the first time I had this it was in the bottle at the 5.2 percent mm -hmm. and I fucking hated it I did not like it I didn't like it and it was a whole bunch of I don't know I don't I don't know if it's also oh, it's it was I can't remember what I was saying during it but I it pretty much the fact that it was hard to drink I didn't like the taste of it and I was and I literally I think I said at the end of it I'm going to go drain for this one and yes. um that was at 5.2 percent and it wasn't it wasn't the obviously it wasn't the alcohol spinach or anything like that it didn't give me a burn or anything like that but I don't know it just didn't taste right for some reason, maybe it was. It could have been the bottle. You know what I yeah, mean? Yeah, it could have just been a Duff bottle. Bottle. Mm. It bottle. could have been because now going over to this one at four and a half percent in the can here. On this one, I'm quite enjoying this one. There, it's not oh, yeah. because it's not because of obviously not because of of a burn or anything from the one before, like I said. But this one is actually quite enjoyable, and I don't know if mm. obviously this is a different batch than the one. In the bottle with that different uh, alcohol by volume number on it, but honestly, I quite enjoy this one. Actually, now that I think about it, when I hold this one up to the light, the bottle did not have this same ruby redness. It was more of a, uh, I don't know. I think it was more, more of a like brown. brown. It, it might have been yeah, yeah, like a murky brown. Yeah, so that that could have like totally have you know just messed up that entire opinion. <laughs> yeah. because, so with this one. Uh, with style, now that I know what it's supposed to be, I quite enjoy this. And for style, I'm gonna get. To, I'm gonna give this one an eight out of ten. And for personal taste, I enjoy this. I really, actually, quite like this one. And again, another eight for my personal opinion on this one. 
So there cool. you go. So maybe maybe I will not put that video online now because it could have been just a bad bottle. So there you go. That's I mean, that's fine. actually one thing I'm really curious about, and we could talk about later, is the difference between the 4.5 and 5.2 version. Um, anyway, moving moving along, uh, Greg, what's your thoughts? What do you think? Well, I overall quite like this. It's, uh, I know, like category-wise, I mean, I don't drink a lot of British ales, uh, so I don't know. To me, I'd categorize this with a British mild or something. I don't know if that's quite accurate. But that's kind of where I'd put it at. And in terms of that, I think it's actually quite good. I don't get a lot of that sort of dirty copper penny bitterness I get from a lot of British ales, which mm. I don't normally care for all that much. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. I don't know. Like, I, I quite like this. It's smooth. It's, you know, it's a light, it's sort of a light beer that doesn't taste like fucking Molson uh, or, uh, sorry, Coors Light or something like that. So, I mean, overall, it's good for the style, for my limited perspective on the style i'd say it's probably a solid eight and for my own personal enjoyment uh i go about a seven five on it not quite an eight but it's good i like it so an eight for style and 7.5 for overall yeah why not all right so now we have greg's input my thoughts on this one here is i'm almost thinking like i would like to try the one in the can at some point uh, just to see what it's like, because what I what I get for this, I get this from this a, a very enjoyable beer. But I mean, I, I, I've all I've I don't think it's very much of a secret on beer tube that I'm a cheap drunk, and I tend to like uh, in drinking beers that I can drink, like maybe like four or five good ones in a sitting rather than drink twelve <sighs> crappy ones overall, and just like sitting enjoying. I, I don't mind having a beer that's maybe a bit stronger and has more flavor to it. Um, with this one here. Uh, I find that I really enjoy the amount of caramel that's in it, uh, but it's got a big, rich, uh, like heavy copper coin kind of taste. And I kind of wonder if maybe the milder version has a less pronounced copper coin taste to it because it maybe does, it's more watery. I, I don't know if it's because it's more watery, but it does have a less of a copper. copper but e taste. even with you, the big copper get, coin, I don't get copper, no, copper at all yeah. in mine. Yeah, I don't know. I, it's just even with that, I do. I do really like this beer. Uh, I, do, I think I do find though that copper penny taste that you get in a lot of these ales can vary depending on sort of where your palate's at, like maybe what you've eaten today, what kind of mood you're in. Because I find sometimes I can drink the same beer and get the stronger that taste stronger sometimes than I do how other many, times. How many dill pickles you've consumed in the last hour? <laughs> that that might that might make a difference. Always sure. makes a difference. <laughs> oh, but, yep. Yeah, uh, yeah. Well. I mean, I'm, I'm getting it, so I'm not saying anybody else will. Uh, anyway, um, oh, for the style, I'd have to give it an 8. I mean, it's really kind of – over here in, in, in Canada, we don't really see a lot. If they call it a brown ale. They call it an ESB. I mean, it's it. Mm -hmm. it you're just thinking of it like a, a, in terms of what constitutes like a British bitter over here. Um, this is actually really nice compared to those. So, uh, But, I mean, uh, I haven't had enough – a specific ruby ales if that's a a true style uh to say that uh, it's one of the best or one of the worst ruby ruby ales uh just compared to other stuff that i've had from the uk this is up there with the like the fuller's products although i think i've really leaned towards like a fuller's 1845 over this oh yeah definitely yeah, i think i think fuller's just have that little bit more of a finesse to their beers than this one finesse and maybe a bit smoother and a bit more character yeah it's not yeah. as rough um anyway uh so yeah eight for the style and overall enjoyment i'm gonna give it a seven five so um there you i go. haven't been paying attention to the con the comments enough to see if judge uh, uh, jamie showed up today so i don't know uh did anybody do the uh the math i can do it real quick if uh you do the math i'll go i'll go through the comments sure if you want you can probably ignore most of them they're all dumb yeah yeah I people. apologize if I have insulted uh, anyone. Especially the ones from I, 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 I the most important. Uh, one, one from a guy named Lee who didn't even show up tonight, even though he's. I would I would ignore his comments. Yeah, Lee Rasan. Yeah, so we're gonna we're gonna start off with this uh, the most important one, the new, uh, the world's greatest beer tuber right now. Uh, Craig from Camp Bay Review says hi, goblins, and then you say hello. Lee says hello, and I say hello, viewers. Hello. Um, Howdy doody. 
I heard Chris is the best beer tuber. No, I'm not. Which one? Chris <laughs> Peters, of course. No, dear. No brainer. Uh, Literally uh, no brainer. on your brain says hi, and he's, his can was a four and a half ABV, and so he's got the ones that we got. Um, oh, Lee was also saying that beer advocate used, uh, used to call this a brown ale. Okay. Uh, and this is again is rebranding a new rum age. Red ale coming to Canada too from Jace Westcott, and the response with that might be good. Um, Craig also says it was much better before the Marston purchased, and I don't know. We can. No, no I wish I could confirm that. Do we know what year Marston purchased it? Uh, I have that written down in my Did thing Nick here. Tell us that it was about two thousand and six or something, or yeah, a bit later. Was. Uh, so I've yeah. definitely not had this before. Yeah, I've, I've yeah me neither. I didn't have this till 2012. So, yeah, when was the Marston's buy? I'm just looking through here. It was – oh, I just wrote down it was since bought out by Marston's. Um, but, yeah, I'm pretty sure it was around 2006. Yeah, I, I, think agree, so. I really agree with Craig on that one. And then Lee also says Blackwish used to be their stout. And uh, Seriously? <laughs> Blackwish was the stout, and now it's the uh, fucking border. Yeah, I've always known that as the porter. It's probably my least Name. favorite. Which would bear that? Just not good. Hmm. Uh, Martians have made all these more less appeal friendly, you know, in their minds. I thought the classic versions were still pretty easy going, yet more favorable. Lee's not liking the way it is now, but he likes it, he likes it from the past. That's very likely. I mean, he, he likes the stuff from the from the past. And, my oh, yeah. vintage. He, he likes living in the past. He is the vintage do, man, that's do, for sure. Do. Uh, Lee came in and said, uh, actually, uh, Rainy on Prey said he, he likes it more as, as it warms up. And I guess that's the way you're supposed to drink this, but I don't drink my stuff mm. warm. Or room yeah, I just anyway. I pulled, I pulled, I pulled mine out of the fridge and it's fucking delicious. Okay. I, th I, I think beers like this are good just. Couple degrees below room temperature, not quite warm, yeah. but not quite cold. Yeah, like I, I pulled mine out of the uh, out of the cellar, just uh, which is about ten degrees, about half an hour before the show. Yeah, I'd say that's ideal. Mm. There you go, and, and it's Lee, tasty. Uh, All the flavors are coming out. Oh. Yeah, there you go. Lee says uh, six for style and six for overall enjoyment for Lee. Uh, let me see. Oh, Lee couldn't join us. Apparently, his uh, his throat hurt and he's getting over a cold. So. We miss you, Lee. Yeah, it's, it's cool. We miss you, buddy. Please. Um, Jay said he had this bottle of Don Reed cold. Huh. Uh, Jason, Jason West his his throat hurts because of all the beer reviews he's been doing for YouTube. The King's yeah. returning, guys. <laughs> <laughs> all those beer reviews he records, but he never uploads. Oh, he, he's, know, got like a, he's got like 100 of them ready to go. He's just waiting for and them then to start his channel first. He's got 300. He's waiting to get 365 of them ready to go so he can have one a day for an entire year. Oh, yeah. It might take four go. years to do it. So then Craig said Craig agrees with Lee there. Uh, same, I guess, same score. He's saying six for style, six for overall enjoyment. Uh, the originals is a better ruby ale. Raining on your parade asks, "What's next week's beer?" We'll talk about that in a second. And then yep. Lee responds with, "I'm assuming with the Marston purchase at 2008." Uh, okay. 2008. All right. Well, that's our close. that's our comments yeah. for today so far. All unless right. uh, you guys want to keep commenting. No. Oh, well, I don't know whether if you guys days. get this artwork, but it's the they release like a my lighting's terrible, so they release like a Halloween version. Oh yeah. Oh, um, on the room. Pretty yeah, much. We had a. Our batch of uh, Hobgoblin Gold had a label like that, where it had the plastic ah, wrap around the entire yeah, bottle. Yeah, it's just a plastic wrap. Is it any different? Is the beer any different, or is it? Just uh, no, it's, it's, it's like... exactly the same. It's just now, if, you, if you peel off the wrap, is there a label like this underneath, like a normal label, or is it um, just? I'm bottle? not too sure. I think it's just a wrap of the a normal Witchwood bottle. Hmm. I'll have a look in a little just bit. A regular one. Regular yeah. one for me. And. Instead of having the blue and gold cap, you get uh, an orange cap. Ah, there you go. I, I, I could have sworn, maybe we did get that here, the uh, the Halloween version, but I just didn't buy it. It's actually, this beer is kind of price. Excuse me, I don't know how many how much everybody else paid, but this beer is actually kind of pricey here. It was $4.45 $4 for a bottle. Greg will know yes. how much it was here because it's the same price for me and Greg, but I don't remember. I think it was two seventy five for the can. Yeah. So too bad. you're you're getting ripped off, Nick. 
Yeah, I mean, I you... how uh, big is the bottle? Is it a five, is it a five hundred at least? Yeah, it's a five hundred. Yeah, so our uh... can is uh, four six. Was it four? No, sorry, the can is actually five hundred. And uh, so I mean, oh, but cans, cans are always a better deal. How, how much is it over there, Peter? Um, well, it varies. It's usually about one pound twenty uh, to about one pound seventy-five. Good. But then you, you, you sometimes find a lot of the Witchwood beers for 99p for a bottle, uh, especially if it's like a seasonal from last year, which they... That's kind of like a Rod J deal? Is one. that a Rod J deal, trailer? Um, it's, it's a very shit Rod J, Rod J deal, but it's a Rod J deal <laughs> all the same. Yeah, but um, Rod J deal, holy shit. That's yeah. like less than two bucks. <laughs> yeah. But um, you also get it in a lot of, um, a lot of our supermarkets and little... Mm corner shops do these like three for five pound four for six pound deals mm -hmm. so it always gets lumped in there it's pretty much everywhere but funny enough you can get the cans for even cheaper in a four pack for uh three pound 99 so pretty much paying a pound a can that's good two bucks a can God, we get ripped yeah. off here you are yeah. getting ripped off god damn it's crazy holy crap all right so for our final tally on our scores we're exactly the same as far as um, out of style. It was uh, 7.85, uh, yeah, 7.85 out of style, 7.85 out of uh, out of uh, overall. So either way, we we all seem to, to like and enjoy way more than Lee did. And uh, who else was in the chat? I think Craig, yeah, Craig. Uh, Lee likes to be controversial. Oh, yeah. Well, we know. That's why we like him, I think. Well, so we keep yeah, I'm conformist. <laughs> Anyway, he's not, corrupt, he's not corrupted. Not corrupted by beer. He's not. He, he's, he's, he's the anti Joe. <laughs> anti Joe, yeah. He heals as opposed to corrupt. <laughs> but um, I don't know if you guys get this in Canada, which is the IPA yeah, can... from Witchwood. No, I've never seen that. Nope. No, it was it was it. initially an export only, but they've started bottling it now. And um, if you can get your hands on it. It's actually know, very surprising how hoppy it is. I would certainly try yes. it. I would I try could. it once. I know the uh, my favorite beer from Witchwood is the King Goblin. I really love that one. Oh, yeah. That's a good one. I'm not at that for a while. And uh, I don't know. You got Ontario guys. If you can get it, I'd recommend picking it up because it's tasty. Anyway, moving right along. We might as well... Um, uh, start to wrap this thing up, read the last few comments. What are we going to do for a beer next week? I think we had agreed offline that we're going to do uh, Miller Genuine Draft. Woo! MGD, baby! MGD. Peter, can you get we're, MGD? We're... Can you get Miller Genuine Draft in the UK? Um, I've seen it here and there, and then it vanishes, so I'll keep an eye out for it. Keep an eye okay. out well, for it. You too, Craig, if you're watching and listening. Uh, everyone else in our little Beer 101 analysis chat group on Messenger can get it. We all know you can. So we yeah, want a we want a massive panel. In here. We want a massive one next week in that panel. So we're gonna see how many people we can get on. Maybe we'll make a special beer one on one analysis. A beer analysis one on one, maybe make it an hour long, because if we're gonna have a full panel of ten people, it could be a long show. Make it till you're naked. Whoa. Yeah. This is Whoa. gonna be a good time. So what was the last couple of comments here? M G D next week. Yeah, Kent Beer Review says four pack of five hundred milliliter bottle. Is it bottle? Oh, cans. Four bucks. Four pounds. Sorry. Damn. Yeah, it's insane. That's crazy. That's less, less, less anyway, than eight bucks yeah. Canadian. Long show. It's M G D. Yeah. Agreed. <laughs> 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 it's it's M G D. Uh, it could be a, a long show. A longer ass. show because we're all going to talk about our history and all that jazz. And so. uh, the first time you were hazed on MGD, first time you got first time you got roofied when you put a, somebody puts up. <laughs> I was sitting at Whiskey Nicks on a visit to uh, Niagara Falls. Anyway, all right. I'm so I think um, I think uh, yeah, unless Chad's doing something, I think he's working tonight. We might as well uh, put something online as a post analysis hangout after this. I want to thank everybody who uh, who is watching. We have nine watching right now. Holy crap! How come uh, none of you guys got this beer and joined us? Exactly. And uh, no. I, 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 I want to give credit where credit's due. Thanks for watching our crap. Um, it's, it takes a lot of courage to sit through and, and, and watch this entire 
hour of slop. Anyway, we're going to go. It takes and, even and, more courage to fap to it. Yeah. An hour. That's uh, true. What, 20 minutes? And that's why Greg is a hero. Anyway, we're going to do an off We are going to do a post analysis hangout. I will talk to you guys in a bit. Yay, we're going right. live. Woo. Cheers, fuckers. Here's everybody. Cheers, motherfuckers. My beer's gone. Mine's done too. Cheers.